Loving Muslims to Jesus. A video to inspire you. A video to encourage and equip you. A video that will help you share your faith in Christ with speakers Tom Doyle and Hormoz Shariat. Islam cannot be ignored any longer. Almost every day you read about Islamic terrorism around the world, and even in the U.S. it is increasing. In Europe, given time, they say that Europe will be an Islamic continent. The majority of the population <clears throat> will be Muslims, and Islamic law will be the law of the land. Even in the USA, the population and influence of Muslims are growing. So what can we do about it? What should we do about it? Hello, my name is Hormuz Shariat from Iran Alive Ministries with Tom Doyle. We are going to share with you how to share the gospel with Muslims. We will do three things. One, in, one inform you. We are going to tell you how to do it. We are going to inspire you. We are going to give you the heart, the motivation, the passion to do it. Also, we will challenge you to step out by faith and share your faith, the gospel, with Muslims both in the USA and around the world. But first, uh, I think it's better that you get to know us more. Tom, would you introduce yourself and yes. your ministry first? My name is Tom Doyle, and I'm the Middle East Director for E3 Partners. And uh, it stands for three things, equip believers to evangelize their nation and establish new churches. So it's a church planting ministry, and God called my wife Joanne and I to the Middle East to work in the Muslim regions of the world. Uh, I was a pastor for 20 years, and then God called us to leave to go work in the Middle East. A lot of people told us that we were crazy, especially my, my mom and dad. Uh, <laughs> it, we're, we're not too crazy about that, but it's amazing what God's doing in the Muslim world, and we're going to give you a peek into that tonight. Praise God. Well, I have a passion uh, to reach out to Muslims. Number one, because I was a Muslim myself. Right. I'm uh, from an Islamic background. I came to USA and I came to Christ here, and I have a heart to reach out to Muslims around the world. Um, not just reach out with the gospel, but also plant churches among them. Yes. We've planted several churches in USA <clears throat> among Iranian Muslims in Europe, but our main focus is uh, church planting inside Iran. And through television and other means, we are making a difference in Iran among Iranian Muslims. So let's uh, start. Uh, number one question. I think we should start here, mm -hmm. Tom. Uh, many people look at these terrorists. They are, seem to be so strong in their faith. They're so ready to die right. for their faith. Uh, you look at <laughs> even the, the way they uh, uh, wear their clothes. It's, it scares us. You know, we, we, we think, are they really reachable? Can we yes. reach out? with the power of the gospel with them. Uh, what's your experience on that? Well, you know, it would seem, if you watch the news, that they're completely unreachable. But he here's the good news. In the last 10 years, more Muslims have come to Christ than in the last 15 centuries of Islam. So that's pretty amazing. And also in America last year, 23,000 Muslims came to faith in Christ in America. So some great things are happening, but we need more. We need more outreach. Yeah, this is the same experience as I have. Uh, Muslims look unreachable, but mm -hmm. practically many of them are open to the gospel. That's right. When our broadcast, uh, our live satellite television broadcast goes out, uh, we have about 1,000 Muslims come to Christ every week. Amazing. When you find open Muslims around the world, but sometimes mm -hmm. even nations yes. are open to the message of the gospel. For example, Iran. When you look at the uh, news in Iran, when you look at the protests in Iran, uh, people, young people on the streets of Tehran protesting against the government, uh, you don't hear anymore them talking death to America. They're talking more. What they're expressing is that we are rejecting the government and we are rejecting Islam because in that country, Islam is the government and the government is Islam. That's right. So those people, those crowd that you mm -hmm. see in the news, they are saying, we want to reject Islam and we are looking for something else. They're looking for secular democracy, but their spirit is open and that's our job to, to share the gospel with them. What has your experience been? Well, we've been blessed to go into Iran, and we were amazed, Hormoz. This is the most open country we've ever been to. 
for the gospel. People coming up asking us about Jesus. We, we know you're Americans. Can you tell us about Jesus? And uh, so we have one story. We were with a family, went to their home. They had us for dinner. And we were with our team there, and, and they fed us, and it was great Iranian hospitality, which you know about. And then after a while, the father said, let's, let's talk. Let's sit in the room and talk. And he wanted to know about the gospel. He wanted to know about Jesus. So we shared the gospel. We took quite a while to go through that, make sure they understood it. And he said, I'm ready to accept the Lord. Who else in the family is ready to accept the Lord? The whole family comes to Christ. They all pray to receive Christ. And it was just amazing. It was glorious. We were rejoicing. And then, then we got back and started to get the emails. And one, one of the brothers wanted to tell about his sister's that were on fire for Jesus. And sometimes they don't get the language right. So he sends me an email and he says, my sisters are hot for Jesus. <laughs> so, um, so, so whether you use on fire, hot for Jesus, however you say it, when Muslims become believers, look out, yes. look out. Many people have not seen a Muslim come to Christ. That's why I wanna share this clip with you. Uh, this is a lady who, who calls our program and just says a few minutes ago, uh, me and my friends yeah. pray to receive Christ with your program. Let's watch that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> شما انجیل رو در منزل دارین؟ نه ندارم من بندرم باز زنگ میزنم اشکال نداره خدا شکر از مملکت عزیزمون در هر گوش و کنارش که زنگ بزنید آلیست اجزه بدید الان دعا میکنیم و میخوام شما رو حتما بدم که با عزیزان در تماس باشید براتون بتونیم انجیل بفرستیم دعا کنید خدا من با خواهر عزیزم با برای عاطفه دعا میکنیم و با او یک دل میشیم که امروز قلب شو به عیسی مسیح داده و وارد بله ملکوت خدا شدن این سه دختر عزیز روح القدس وارد شو و تمام درد های اونها رو بردار خدا من در تمام درد ها و مشکلات رو همین الان و آمده و زیر صلیب تو میگذاریم و اعلام میکنیم از امروز به بعد هر لعنت هر مشکل هر دردی که بوده به اسم عیسی مسیح تموم شده کلام خدا میفرماید تا تا کنون چیزی به اسم من به نام عیسی مسیح نخواسته ای به طلبید و شادی شما کامل گردد خداوندا این گریه ها گریه های شادی است چون هر چه کهنه بود هر چه درد بود هر چه لعنت بود در زندگی عاطفه و فریبا و فاطمه بیرون اون رفت و از امروز شادی قوت پیروزی حیات وارد زندگی آنها شده خدا اون خونه رو پر از نور بساز و اجازه بده قوت تو در آنجا جاری شود به اسم ایسای مسیح آمین 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 پریز دو لورد آمین 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 with us, and, and they call us later and say, we have come to Christ. So uh, Muslims, or many of them, are open to the gospel. And uh, uh, you talked about being hot. I remember uh, a phone call uh, from Iran. This, this lady called, and I was talking to her, and I was mm -hmm. so impressed by her knowledge of the Bible. We talked about persecution. She gave mm -hmm. in three minutes a mature view of persecution. She talked about marriage, and she was so mature. Mm. And, uh, and she would recite Bible verses. In every topic we talked, she just recited Bible verses. And uh, at the end, after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I said, so lady, why, why did you call us? And she said, well, I called to get a Bible. Mm. So what? <clears throat> how how mm. long ago did you come to Christ? Three months. But you look so mature. Oh. You sound so mature. And you don't even have a Bible. You know what she said? She said, whenever I watch your program, I write down the verses you use, and I memorize them. When we talk about Muslim evangelism, we're talking about mm -hmm. people so hungry oh. for God that when they come to Christ, it's not just the easy believism that yeah. they, these Muslims just, okay, you put your name as a believer. These are life transformation. And when you're in darkness, you appreciate light a lot. So Absolutely. when these people come to Christ, 
they're dedicated, they're sold out mm. to Jesus. You told me about uh, somebody who were, was kicking the Bible. Tell me yes, about that one of, story. one of our friends yeah. in the Middle East, his name is Maher, and his cousin Jamal became a believer and shared the gospel with him, and he grabbed the Bible out of his hand and kicked it. He said, I don't want to hear anything from this book. It's a false book. Get it out of my face. Don't ever show it to me again. Well, anyway, Jamal says he remembers seeing the Bible fly across the room. It was almost like it went in slow motion, and he thought, you know, you don't do that to God's word. He's going to get you for that. He doesn't <laughs> let that go by. And so wouldn't you know, within a few weeks, Maher starts to have dreams about Jesus. Yes. And he comes back to Jamal and says, you have to tell me about Jesus. He shares with him. He prays with him, leads him to Christ. He gets discipled. Last year, we had a chance to go to Maher's church. He's a pastor in the Middle East now. <laughs> Praise God. And the amazing thing is this. The worship was passionate. I mean, the guy in the last row was singing his heart out. The preaching was amazing. And in fact, Jamal gave him the Bible that he kicked and said, preach out of this Bible. <laughs> Never forget where you came from. And then he said, let's do our memory verse for the week. And uh, a 13-year-old girl stands up and does the memory verse. And you know what it was? The second chapter of Acts. All 56 verses. <laughs> then a 79-year-old man, then a 34-year-old woman holding two children gets up and they nail it, Hormos, Acts 2. And they're just eating up God's word. They're so in love with Jesus. And the Americans are sinking more and more into their chairs. Yes. They were Muslims two years ago, and now they're just eating up God's word. So, you know, sometimes the most fanatical Muslims yes. become the most committed followers of Jesus. Yes, that's right. And I have seen that. You know, I just was talking about, uh, talking to many um, leaders, underground house church leaders a few weeks back. And I told them, these are mostly young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them, you're putting your life on the line. Every day you go out to reach, uh, preach the gospel. If you get arrested, you will be killed. Do you know mm -hmm. that? Do you know yeah. the danger? They all said, yes, we know. And we willingly mm -hmm. are willingly to do that, uh, ready to do that. And I told them, so uh, why? Where why do you, you do bring that? that courage? Where do you bring that passion for Jesus? And this is what they said. They said, you know, before we <clears throat> become Christians, we were Muslims. And we were ready to give our lives to Allah, who is a distant God, who is a violent God, right. and mm -hmm. never did anything for us, but required us to give our lives for him. And if we were ready to, do, to give our lives to Allah, how much more we are ready to give our lives to Jesus, to Jehovah, who loved us, who's so personal, That's who right. died for us. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a big deal for us. It's natural. So when these fanatic Muslims come to Christ, they are ready to live and die for Jesus. Right. And many of them do. So when we uh, Christians here, we look at them, we, we, we think they're unreachable. Not only they're <coughs> reachable, but they're good. they will make the best Christians in the world because right. they're so passionate and ready to, to die for Jesus. That's right. Amen. Well, let, let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, to sum it up, Muslims are reachable. It's not the question, are Muslims reachable? I think the question is, are we Christians reachable? Can they reach us? <laughs> and can we step out and share the gospel with them? Many of them, even you look at uh, their faces you may not know. You look at their clothes, they're covered. And you, you think <clears throat> they may not be open, but many of them are sincerely looking for God and they're That's open. Right. And when they come to Christ, they will put you and me to shame about our faith. And That's we can right. learn from them about dedication, loving Jesus with all our heart, because many of them do, and many of them are ready and already die for Jesus. Are the Muslims reachable? Of course, have faith, and let us reach out to them. <coughs> many are desperate to hear the message of the gospel. Let's, uh, let's move on. When we look at terrorism, like 9-11, Tom, mm -hmm. um, a natural reaction for us as human beings, and many times even Christians, is to either fear them, mm -hmm. no, Muslims, yeah. or even worse, hate them. Right. You know, some, I've heard some people say, oh, they're, they're going to bomb each other, let, let them kill each other. Sure. You know, I don't care. But that's not the heart of God, is it? 
No, it, it really isn't. And I'm glad that God doesn't look at Muslims through the eyes of the evening news uh, like we do. He looks at them through his truth. Genesis 1.27, they're created in the image of God. First Timothy 2 tells us it's not God's will that any should perish. And so a, a few months or most after 9-11, we went into the Gaza Strip. Voice of the Martyrs at that time said it was the most dangerous place in the world. And so we're in there just a few minutes and a woman in a burqa comes up and grabs my arm and says, you're from America, aren't you? And I said, yes, how, how did you know? And she said, well, I can tell by your eyes. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and so she said, um, did you see on 9-11 when the buildings came down and the people in Gaza were cheering, the crowds were cheering? I said, yes, I, I saw that on CNN. And she said, well, not me. I was crying for those people because they didn't deserve to die. And I remember thinking, you know what, Lord? We can work with these people. They're human beings. They need Jesus just like everyone else. Right. What motivates me to reach out to Muslims is uh, I have prayed, you know, and I, I believe I've got a piece of God's heart. When I look at Muslims, I see them as captives. Of course, Jesus came to set the captives free. I see them, and I, I was one of them. I see them people who are searching sincerely for God, but they are bound in a religion that gives them only one choice, That's right. Islam. When you see Muslims, have passion and compassion for them. They are captives that need to be set free. There are 1.5 billion Muslims <coughs> around the world. And of course, Jesus will not come back until they get a realistic chance to hear the gospel. Romans 8, 15. Let's go about this captivity they're, they're experiencing in Islam. Romans 8, 15 talks about and it says, you have, for you have not received the spirit of slavery to fear again. And that's the spirit of Islam. Slavery and fear. And not just Islam. Any religion. Judaism. Even religion of Christianity. Christianity can be a religion. And when Christianity is a religion, it's slavery and it's fear. So it's about not just Islam. It's about all religions. But the uh, Bible says, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which you can cry out, Abba, Father. You know, in Islam, the, God is so distant. It's so fearful. It's, uh, they're terrorized. They're not only fearful of Allah, they're terrorized. But when we share the gospel, they come free from that captivity of lies they've heard about God. And the moment, it, it's thrilling when a Muslim comes to Christ and the first time they cry, cry out, Abba, Father, many times they're crying. This is a breakthrough. God who created me is my father. Mm -hmm. So looking at Muslims as victims, they're victims of enemy, our, our enemy Satan. And they're ready, they're, they're sitting there in, in bondage, waiting for us, you and me, to reach out to them with the power of the gospel, which sets them free, sets the captives free. That's the passion. What I admire about you, and I've talked to you many times before, is the passion you have, Tom. You know, I'm a Muslim, and of course they say, you came from a Muslim background. Of course you have to reach out to your own people. But here, you, uh, as an American Christian, you have a passion mm -hmm. for Muslims. Uh, share about it. And you told me about that uh, woman yes. in Denver, was it? Yes, yeah. in the okay. store in Denver. And, yes. I, and I think one of the problems that we see is Muslims feel rejected. They yes. feel rejected by history, rejected by society, rejected really by everyone today. And so I'm in a store in Denver. I was going to buy a dress for Joanne's birthday, and I'm, I'm in the women's section there. And this woman comes up, and she's got jet black hair blue eyes and olive skin. And I thought, okay, she's Middle Eastern, you can tell. And uh, I said, uh, well, where are you from? And she said, um, the Middle East. And I said, well, whereabouts in the Middle East? I travel in the Middle East. And she said, let's just say the Middle East. And I said, okay. So I took a chance and I said, you know, I just came back from this cool trip. It was amazing. I was in Iran and I loved the people, the culture, the food, the hospitality. It was amazing being there. And she looked straight in my eyes and she said, I'm from Iran, but I didn't want to tell you. And I don't really tell anybody that because we're the enemies 
I live in America and everything you see on the news is bad about Iran. So I just don't tell people that. And I think, you know, at that point we talked and, and, and struck up a friendship and, and believers, that's what we need to do. We need to reach out to them. Muslims many times are isolated, marginalized in our country and they need friendships. And that's really about the easiest thing we can do. Build a friendship with them. Yes. Uh, talking about rejection, I think that's one of the root spirits that's uh, controlling Muslims. When I look at the history and the roots of Islam, it takes me back to, to the Bible, to where um, Hagar and Ishmael were rejected. I think that's, that's where Islam got its power. Of course, all of us uh, feel rejection. I mean, we were thrown out of the Garden of Eden. But when you look at Ishmael and Hagar's life, they were rejected two more times. That's right. When Hagar was pregnant, she was thrown out. Mm -hmm. And it is said that even the, uh, the baby in the womb feels that rejection. Mm -hmm. And when he, the uh, boy, Ishmael, was 10, 12, still, they, I mean, they uh, throw him out of the house. And I see that spirit of rejection in Islam. And, and, and our enemy took advantage of that. So do you reject it? You're away from God, and let me, let me give you a way. Let me give you a way that you, with uh, this religion, you will try. I don't promise you, but if you try hard, maybe your father in heaven, maybe Abraham will accept you back. And I see that that's the spirit behind Islam. And mm -hmm. there's so much rejection. That's why when we talk about love, it's so powerful. Acceptance is so powerful for all of us, right. but more for Muslims. They feel rejected by God, and they're trying with their own works to buy their way back to the Father's house. That's right. And you see them pray five times a day. They, you see them uh, suffer. You, you see them um, fast. All because they sincerely want to get back to God. And when you, we look at them, that they're ready to do anything to go back to God, and they don't know the way, That's right. that breaks my heart. That break because I see their sincerity and the price they're paying to connect to God, and they can't. They, they, they're bound in a slavery of a religion. I think our hearts should be broken for Muslims before we even step out. And the way it, sh it should be broken is to look at them how God looks at them. Absolutely. What do you think? Absolutely. And, and with this harvest today, with, with these great numbers we're hearing and seeing, and, and, and think about that, how God led you into this ministry, a thousand Muslims a week are coming to faith in Christ through the television program. We're at E3, we're kind of the ground troops going village to village, and we're seeing tremendous numbers too. And what is it basically that attracts Muslims to Christ. Now, Dudley Woodbury at Fuller Seminary has done a study on this. He came up with five keys that are key factors in bringing Muslims to Christ. And they are number one, the love of Jesus seen in his life and his teaching. And they often talk about his treatment of people, uh, maybe the insignificant person they might say is insignificant, a man born blind, or, or someone that was immoral, the, the woman at the well. But they see that, and they see how Jesus treats people, and they're drawn to him. And, and, and you've seen that, too, on your television program. Tell the story about the wedding vows. I love that. Well, you know, when you, when you talk to a, to a Muslim, when you have a heart and love for them, they sense that. Mm -hmm. And when you, without love, you're sharing, sharing the gospel with them, and they sense that, too. And our love for them and for one another is a great testimony. I want to just challenge everybody. Uh, where is our heart? Mm -hmm. Do we have a heart for Muslims? You know, some people claim, I'm, I'm walking with God. It's hard to say if somebody walks with God or loves God. Oh, I love God. I walk with God. But there is one way to test people's heart. And one is, one is this way. If you're walking with God, you will have God's heart for the lost. That's right. If you're walking with God, your heart will be broken for those who don't know Jesus. And 1.5 billion people are going to hell and they don't know Jesus. That's right. If you say you know God and you have God's heart, then you will cry for the lost, right. both here in the U.S. and around the world. 
Now, talking about how to reach out to them, number one is that passion. And out of that passion comes love. You know, I remember um, doing survey in my, my own church and asking people why you came to Christ. And they said, uh, love. So mm -hmm. I said, what attracted you to Jesus? Um, most of them said love. And I asked them, um, you mean the way we loved you when you entered, you know, you came to church? Many of them said no. So, so what love? And they said, the way you Christians love one another. Absolutely. Because they said, when you love us, we, we feel maybe, you know, you want to trick us to become a Christian. But when you love one another, yeah. <laughs> we see that that is real love. That's why that, uh, when we had that program on TV with my wife, worked. Uh, we did a series of television programs on marriage, and me and my wife were on TV, and we were talking about cr Christian marriage, uh, mm -hmm. role of husband, role of wife, and during those uh, weeks, we had so many salvations, Muslims calling, and they were saying, the way you and your wife interact, the way you look at each other, the way you love one another, even in front of the camera, it has proven to us, That's Jesus right. is the way, and we want to pray to receive Christ. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Great thing is the end of that series, one, uh, the last day, me and my wife, they said, we're going to renew, renew our vows. And uh, we told people, uh, all of you get together, those, uh, those who are married, and we ded dedicate our lives to Jesus, and we renew our vows. And that day, we had so many salvations also. Okay. Because Muslims here, and uh, uh, we, we held each other's hand. Of course, the staff, they made a beautiful you know, bouquet and everything <laughs> for us on TV to really make it really meaningful. And uh, my wife and I held each other's hands and mm -hmm. in front of camera, we expressed our love, commitment, forgiveness mm -hmm. uh, on camera and uh, rededicated our marriage and ourselves to the Lord. And that day and for days and weeks later, People told us they, that's the day they came to Christ. Actually, they send us pictures. I have the, several pictures. Uh, I love them. I, I've kept them. Uh, it's a picture, uh, husband and wife holding hands. And here is a, a television in the background. And me and my wife <laughs> holding hands there. <laughs> and they're holding hands. And they're renewing their vows. And actually, by, re, before renewing the vows, I led them to Christ. Praise dedicate God. your life to Christ. Dedicate your marriage. If you have marriage problem, dedicate That's your right. personal life to Christ and then your marriage. So it wasn't just renewing of vows. It was salvation. So that picture I value because they're holding hands and they're crying. Amen. Husband and wife. They're coming to Christ as they're dedicating their lives to Christ. So love, even the way husband and wives we lo uh, love each other uh, in church, mm -hmm. that is a great witness. It's a great power. And the lifestyle of Christians, they see the joy. We, we hear about that. We hear about the love. We hear them say the way you talk to each other is different than how we talk to each other. And, but we see this joy. And in fact, when one of them does become a believer, that usually is the telling factor, how family members or somebody finds out that they're a believer. One, one uh, man was telling me that his family said, you, you look happy. You don't look burdened. You look like there's a, a, a heavy weight off your shoulders. You look joyful. What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> and, and it was the joy. It's the fruit of the spirit that is naturally going to come out. Number three, the power of God seen in healing, dreams, and visions. And we could talk a day and a half on this in our informal poll that we do when we're around the Middle East with MBBs, Muslim background believers. We find that about half of them had a dream or a vision or a healing before they came to Jesus. That's right. I'm amazing. It, it's so common. Um, you know, God is reaching out to them by visions and dreams. We are actually joining God. He is ahead of us. He's doing it. And sometimes I'm jealous. They uh, see visions, dreams, miracles so often. Uh, my survey has shown over 70% all the time. Wow. Uh, they have had some kind of supernatural uh, to me, it seems that God is running a special for Muslims these days. That's so, right. <laughs> <laughs> They're his best customers right yeah, now. That's right. I mean, God is breaking through. That's right. What are we doing? We just join God because that's he's right. doing it. When we share the gospel, we see, we see miracles happen. Let, let's uh, look at this clip. Uh, sharing the gospel on television. People call us. They're healed. Miracles. 
uh, this scope shows an example. شما انجیل رو دارید بردر از انجیل رو دارید در خونه کتاب رو دارید کتاب مقدس رو در خانه من ندارم کتاب مقدس رو ولی ایسای مسیح من ایمان بهش رو بردم و بچه من رو چپا دارد من خود ایسای مسیح رو دیدم یه نور دیدم اصلا یه چیزی من نمیتونم بگم پوشی اینجا Praise wow, praise you know, I talked Lord. to this man afterwards and he was, he made a statement, I never forget. He said, you know, Pastor Hormoz, um, being with Jesus for eight, nine hours, it just feels like 15 minutes. Oh. It's so sweet. Oh. And uh, miracles happen all the time. And, you know, we talk about miracles, but the love and joy we have. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to talk about the joy. We talked about love. We want to talk about joy. We Christians have something in us that the Muslims take notice because it's a very sad religion. And when, when we smile even, like mm -hmm. uh, on our television program, I pray before I go on television. I give my burdens to Jesus. Right. I say, give me the spirit of joy. And uh, when I go on the air, I have joy of God. And I pray and I hope it shows on my faith. Uh, so when I smile, uh, on TV, people come to Christ by just me smiling. Watching. And you know, is, there, was a, uh, there was a professor who told us, um, he came to Christ and he, uh, he said, I was so afraid to tell people about uh, at my work. I would lose my work and mm -hmm. I would be killed um, about Jesus. He said, I went there and people one day at lunchtime, they came and said, Professor so and so, have you come to Christ? Have you believed in Jesus? He said, no, 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 I'm a Muslim. He said, I went home and I was so sad. I said, Jesus, I, I, I'm sorry. I failed you, every, you know, mm. denied you. Give me another chance. He said, two months later, I was uh, at, uh, uh, at uh, university again. And they came and said, Professor so -so, you cannot deny. We know you have become a Christian. He said, why do you say that? Well, we have seen you being joyful the last few months. You have peace. You don't fight. You're not involved with office politics. You know, you're, so you must have become a Christian. Amen. And he said, that was when I had the courage to say, yes, I am a Christian. Our attitude, our lifestyle Absolutely. Um, makes, makes a big difference. A absolutely. We, we were with a leader recently in the Middle East, and he was working with a group that kind of split off from Islam and had been there two years trying to reach him with the gospel hormones and nothing, nothing was happening. They weren't interested. They didn't see their need for Christ. And he was on his face and he said, God, you are going to have to do something spectacular. These people need to know you and you're going to have to do some kind of a great miracle. Well, the next day a family comes to him and they have a little boy that has leukemia. And the father says, I know that you're a Christian and I know that you pray and truly believe God. Would you pray for my son? So they pray for the son. 
couple weeks later, he goes to the doctor and they come back, they make a beeline for the house and they say, the leukemia is gone. Hallelujah. The leukemia is gone. And so this leader, this pastor said, the next day there was a knock at the door and he opened the door and there were about 50 people waiting to talk to him <laughs> right. and hear about Jesus. And so we talked about the miracles and he has a book that he's recorded them. Right. He's seen about 75 miracles that can only be explained God's healing power through the dreams, the visions, and him just touching people and yes. healing them. But we have to share the gospel. God That's confirms right. the gospel with mi mi visions, miracles. So, but we still have to share the gospel. Uh, let's talk about the truth. We talk about lifestyle yes. and uh, what's truth the Bi of the Bible has a role in this. And that's the key factor number four, the truth of the Bible. You know, the Word of God over 3,300 times declares itself to be the Word of God. Thus says the Lord. And so when Jesus arrives in the New Testament, the, the Pharisees and, and the religious leaders are amazed because he's teaching as one who has authority. So when they get into the Word of God and start to read about Jesus, uh, it, it's, it's earth-shattering for them. I know in one area in the Middle East, um, they've taken a Bible and, and said to the, they, they actually posted this on a mosque. They said, there are Bibles in the town and whatever you do, don't read the red letters. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, <laughs> don't read those. And one man came to Christ and he said to us, you know, I went home and I decided that's all I was going to read is the red letter. <laughs> that's it. Oh, man. Um, tell me about the, uh, the billboard you, you were mentioning, uh, because that shows uh, the, how people feel about Islam. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the dissatisfaction with the type of Islam they're experiencing, and that's key factor number five. And we were in Iran, and immediately we were um, in a bus, and there was a man that was uh, hired by the government, and he was to take us on this tour of Tehran. And immediately he knew that we were Christians, and he said, well, you know, Tom, the young people in Iran are not embracing Islam whatsoever. They don't want anything to do with it. They're all turning to Christianity. He said, in fact, the majority of the young people are going to be following Jesus. And the timing was perfect. I didn't realize that we were coming up on a billboard of the Ayatollah, you know, and it's this stern looking, you know, down at, at the people as they drive by on the street. And he said, well, it's really simple, Tom. Who would you want to follow? Jesus who loves you or that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, people are so dissatisfied. I, I talked about the crowds. And I remember a, a phone call, a person was saying, you know, I, I was a devout Muslim for 30 years. I've tried it. Yeah. And here, I'm not afraid. I want to pray to receive Christ on the air. So let everybody, yes. everybody know. He said, I sincerely have followed Islam all my life. It has not done anything for me personally. Mm. I don't have peace. I don't have yeah. joy. It hasn't done anything for my family. My relationship with my wife and kids are not right. It hasn't done anything for my society. Mm -hmm. The drug addiction, suicide, you know, economy, it's, it's all bad. Mm. So Islam is not the way. Islam is not the answer. Islam is the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to pray to receive Christ. So what attracts a Muslim to Christ, as you mentioned, uh, it's our love. That's right. It's our joy. It's our lifestyle. Um, we have to live. You know, the uh, Bible talks about truth in 3 John. It says, uh, walk in the truth. Truth is something that you walk in and you live it. You don't argue about it. You live the That's truth. Right. And it's very attractive. Jesus himself is very attractive. And people are dissatisfied with Islam. So what attracts them is all of this. And they are being attracted. Jesus is very attractive. And if you share Jesus with them and you live your life to be an attractive example of Christ's power, they are attracted to Jesus. Right. So let's live so that we will be attractive. Right? Good. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now let's talk about what hinders. We talked about what attracts a Muslim to Christ. What hinders a Muslim from coming to, to Christ? Well, I, I think the first one is misconceptions about Christianity. Uh, we all know this, uh, especially in the Middle East, Central Asia, there are people that say, I'm Christian, and that really doesn't mean anything other than they just weren't born Muslim. Uh, I mean, in Lebanon, it's a political party. So saying they're Christian, you know, Jesus never called us to be Christian. It, it says that only three times in the Bible, the word Christian. 
286 times he called us to be disciples. disciples yeah. and, and so there's a major difference. So, so maybe they meet a Christian, and that doesn't tell us how they live. That just tells, you know, maybe they're non-Muslim. But really, we're looking for believers. And, and so many have misconceptions about Christianity because they've run into Christians, people that really don't care about following the Lord. They're not following him daily. That's right. Well, one of the uh, hindrances is the uh, deity of Christ. Yes. I found that to be number one. Yes. Sometimes they're attracted to Jesus. Oh, Jesus is so loving. You know, yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, he died on the cross for me. But who is Jesus? Is God. No, 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 no. That, yeah. that, that's blasphemy. Uh, the way I deal with it, I want to hear what, how you deal with it. I, um, the, the things I know it's in their heart, I express it. Like uh, before even they say it, I said, raising a man to be God yes. is blasphemy. Yes. I mentioned that several times. But when we talk about the deity mm -hmm. of Christ, um, I present the gospel in a way, and we're going to do that, that when you get to be to Christ, who is Christ, his deity is already established. And so, it's not something that you argue about Trinity or deity of Christ. It's something you try to explain, especially from the Old Testament, and, and pray that God will reveal that to you. Of course, uh, we have uh, answers. Like, uh, one of the answers I give is that I never say that Jesus, a man, a prophet, was raised to be God. That's, That's right. blasphemy. That's blasphemy. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But do you think God loved you enough that he came after you? Would, yeah. would you... If, if their father or mother, I ask them, your father, if your child is lost, what would you do? Would you sit ho at home and let others, and neighbors go That's after right. him? Or you would go look for your child? And most of them say, they say yeah, of course, I wouldn't sit in my house. I will That's go. Right. And I ask them, and I tell them, do you think God is lower than you? You would go. You would go and find your lost child. You think God will not do that? Mm -hmm. So God did that. It's not that we raise a man named Jesus to be God. It is that God so loved the world that he put on the flesh to come and look for you and look for me. He loves you. Absolutely. He loved you so much. He came after you. And do you want to receive? Do you want to accept that love or reject that love? <clears throat> so... Deity of Christ, you don't need to argue. It's, it's something yeah. super, you know, spiritual. Oh, yeah. And, and I love to use human examples. Yes. So, like you just said, um, about a year ago, we were in Jerusalem at the Garden Tomb. And it was on Easter. And it was a glorious morning. And as we're getting ready to worship, a Palestinian believer walks to the microphone. A Jewish Messianic believer walks to the microphone who used to serve in the Israeli Defense Forces. And the Palestinian pastor used to be a terrorist. He was put in jail four times. They put their arms around each other. One prayed in Arabic, one prayed in Hebrew, and there was not a dry eye in the house. And I'll tell people this all the time. No man could pull that off. That has to be God. Only God could take away the bitterness and the hatred that they had for each other, and now they love each other and their brothers. So I think the proof is obviously in the results, that's right. and that's what we like to tell them. And who Jesus is is a spiritual thing that even God uh, opened up for Peter. Mm -hmm. who, do, who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. And he said, you're son of God. So uh, I've seen that when people are sincere, and I explain them simple, as, as you said, and ask and pray. Let mm -hmm. God talk to you. And I don't ask them, pray that, is Jesus God or not? I ask him, pray, God, do you love me enough right. to come after me? That's right. And listen, in your heart. That's right. So because if the answer is yes, Jesus is God in flesh. So I put it in that context. Do you pray? Do you think God loves you to come after you? And of course, God himself reveals that. Mm -hmm. I remember calls, not more, more than one. I had calls on our uh, television program. And uh, I remember this specific one. He said, I've got my satellite dish just last week. And I've been watching you for one week. And I'm uh, calling to pray with you to receive Christ on the air. I said, what? One week in my heart, I said, one week a Muslim? The, maybe, maybe he's just uh, excited yeah. and uh, uh, emotional maybe. Mm -hmm. So I said, wait, wait, I have to ask you, who is Jesus? Jesus is everything for me. What did he do? He died on the cross. Mm. And uh, uh, do you believe Jesus is God? Sure, yes, Jesus is God. He said, in one week, you... All these questions were answered. How did you come to find out that Jesus was God? He said, easy. Jesus told me himself. 
Oh, he, oh. <laughs> he appeared to me. He said, I'm God, God. Believe in me. You yeah. know? So we have the power of God behind us. When we share the gospel, God confirms That's that. Right. Opens up the truth for that. Absolutely. Now, uh, about the immoral lifestyle of Christians, I think that's one hindrance that we have. You know, how we live um, could attract. Yeah. We talked about being attractive, mm -hmm. uh, our lives being attractive for people. Sometimes our lives are repulsive. What, and sometimes we don't even know it. We're Christians in the West, uh, we have a culture. That's sometimes right. it's offensive to them. Uh, give us a couple examples so we, we'll be aware yeah, of that. And yeah, and I really want to hit that head on. When I'm with Muslim people, I just want to bring that up. And, and I think the best way to do it is to talk about the Crusades, yes. because that's not the most glorious time in our history, and all Muslims will know about the Crusades. And so I will ask them, um, are you familiar with the, the time period, the Crusades? Absolutely. And they still hold that against us. And um, so I bring that up and I say, you know, uh, actually, I want to ask you forgiveness for that. Because that really does not represent Jesus. Jesus never commanded us to convert or kill people and he didn't practice it. So for whoever it was that named the name of Christ, they weren't following Jesus. Please forgive us for that. That's not a good representation of following Jesus. Yes, you know, uh, the image that Muslims have from Christianity is television, right. Hollywood, yes. MTV. <clears throat> that's, that's, that's right. how they think, oh, those are Christians doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we live a, a moral life uh, before them, they're shocked. They say, are you a Christian? You're different. Yeah. You're different from others. And, but sometimes unknowingly, we offend them. For example, uh, I have a uh, picture of a Bible under the feet. And I remember in a conference, oh. uh, the, one of the conferences, uh, uh, the pastor said, do you believe in the Bible? Everyone said, yes. And this conference were <clears throat> many non-Christians. It was a, like a camp, summer yeah. camp. We were Christians and non-Christians. And he said, do you believe in the Bible? Yes. Um, do you, can you stand on it? Yes. And he literally said, put the Bible on the floor, just like this picture, and let's stand on it. And uh, the Muslims were offended. They yeah. couldn't do it. And they were about to receive Christ. And this stumbled them. He said, mm -hmm. if you don't respect your own Bible, how much more should we trust it if you, if you do that to, to, to your Bible? You know, they respect right. the Quran so much. Um, so even this respecting Bible, our clothes, you know, sometimes uh, the way uh, we wear our clothes Absolutely. unknowingly. They say, if you're walking with God, how come you look like that? Absolutely. You know? So if you want to reach out to Muslims, uh, uh, you know, P Paul said, if my e eating, you know, I, I become all things to all people, yes. and I would rather not eat all my life to, not to stumble people. So if you want to reach out to Muslims, we have to, because of love, <laughs> not because we have, because of love, we limit ourselves That's right. so we will not offend them. That's exactly yes. right. Boy, another big barrier is, is fear. fear. The fear of coming to Christ. What that is going to mean, what's that going to cost them with their family. And, and we know leaders in the Middle East that when they're ready to pray with a Muslim to accept the Lord, they ask them two questions. Are you willing to be persecuted for Jesus? And then secondly, are you willing to die for Jesus? And you know, I was a I was a pastor in America for 20 years. I can't imagine asking that in the new members class, Hormos, you know? <laughs> I think I'll go to the Baptist church down the street. I mean, we live in Colorado and they don't even show up when there's light snow, you know, but, but willing to suffer, willing to be killed for Jesus and perfect love, yes. just cast that fear out. That's right. Um, many times, uh, this is my experience, they, Hear the gospel again. Jesus is attractive. The gospel is attractive. Forgiveness, love, That's peace, right. joy, but it's a supernatural fear. Again, it's the spirit of Islam. I I remember many times as a pastor, I would share the gospel with people, and as I'm holding their hands, about do you do you want to believe in Jesus? Yes. Okay, let's hold hands and pray. And as I am praying with them, I open my eyes and I look at their knees, and knees are shaking oh, with yes. fear. Many yes. times I ask them, do you understand the gospel? <clears throat> yes. Do you want to believe in Jesus? No, 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 I, I'm afraid. And uh, usually, this is a good, exa a good <clears throat> lesson. Usually I say, okay, go <clears throat> come back next week. And all that week, what I pray, one prayer, bind the spirit right. of fear. <clears throat> That's, That's my right. prayer, all that week. 
Why in the spirit of fear? And next week they come and they're open and they pray and receive Christ. And I remember um, I was baptizing a man and I asked him, how did you come to Christ? And he said, uh, it was very hard. He said, I was attracted to Jesus, but I was afraid to come to your church. This is San Jose, California. And many times, many weeks, I would come to the streets where the church was. was uh, I was afraid. I would shake with fear to step in a Couldn't church. In. This went for weeks. Finally, I got the guts to step in. I, one, night, one day, one Sunday, I sat in the back and the worship and the sermon, I liked it. But the moment the sermon was over, I ran mm. outside with fear. Yeah. I ran to my apartment. I fell on my face and I prayed, Allah, Allah, please forgive me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt my business. Don't hurt my family. Don't hurt my health. Just, I'm sorry I went to church. And I'm even more sorry because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, With boy. That fear is a stopping. Yes. So praying to bind the fear is a great spiritual warfare prayer. And 1 John 4.18 talks about this. 1 John 4.18 talks about, says there is no fear in love mm -hmm. because fear involves punishment. And it says perfect love casts out fear. Yes. Perfect love cast out fear. It, uh, it's interesting, the casting out. That's a spiritual warfare term. It's almost like casting yeah, out yeah, a demon. demon. Almost. It yes. is, it is yes. a demon. So uh, having love for people, it frees them. And love of Christ for them and our love for them frees them from that, from that fear. You know, when, many times I uh, remember like, like uh, the woman at the well. Jesus, she was, you know, with many men, and she comes to believe in Jesus. If it was today, sometimes we pastors say, oh, we need to cast out demons yeah. from her. You know, she has been with so many men. But Jesus didn't do that. Her, his perfect love, I think, freed her That's right. from all that. So we have all these spiritual warfare weapons, but love is one of them. And once they're free, the boldness comes in. Once that spirit of fear is broken yes. and they receive Jesus and they're filled with faith, filled with the spirit, that boldness just results Amen. after that. Amen. So what hinders a Muslim to come to Christ is fear. Mm -hmm. It's the question of deity of Christ. It's immoral moral lifestyle and uh, unknowingly us stumbling them. So if you want to share the gospel with Muslim, watch out. Be ready. It's yes. not too hard, but just be careful and learn a few things because God is already working in their hearts. We sh just should not be a stumbling block to them. Now, let's talk about practically how do we share the gospel with the Muslims so they can understand. How do you present the gospel? Uh, what, do, what do you say? Well, you know, I think there's a few things. First of all, we have to build a relationship yeah. with them. You can't just walk up and use some evangelistic tool and they're going to go, wow, and the light bulb goes on. You need to have a relationship with them. And so I, I think there's about five or six things. Number one, learn about them. Learn about their culture. Learn about their family. Um, uh, get to know them. Two, confess your prejudice. Um, sometimes we just have that feeling because we're so news driven. Well, they're all terrorists. You know, they, 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 they want to kill me. They don't all hate us. They, they don't all hate Israel. I found that to be true uh, in the Middle East too. So get rid of that prejudice. Don't stereotype them. Uh, begin a friendship. Believers, that is such an easy thing for us to do. We can do that. We can sh uh, get to know them. Uh, keep it on Jesus. Boy, I would say just talk about Jesus, forget about politics, forget about comparing their religion, criticizing them, apologetics. That can come later once they accept the Lord. Uh, ask questions. Uh, find out what they think about the religion. Ask them, hey, I know you're Muslim and I'm, I'm a Christian. I follow Jesus. What do you believe about this? And they'll talk about it. And, it. and it's good for them to verbalize their faith. Sometimes they see there's real holes in it. And, and then I think the key is, of course, pray for them. Start praying. If every believer that had Muslim friends would dedicate just even a short amount of time each day to pray for them, we would see so many more salvations. Amen. I believe that. Um, I want to share a simple gospel presentation. Um, one mistake we make as Christians, we jump to Jesus. Yeah. You know, we talk about Jesus. 
uh, right away, and then we get into argument or misunderstanding of who mm-hmm. Jesus is. Um, the one um, way over the years we found ways of being effective sharing the gospel with Muslims, and one uh, principle I've, I've found is to start with the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have produced a video called God mm-hmm. is Love that presents the gospel in that way. So I start, when you share the gospel with them, I go through four steps. One is uh, man in the presence of God. This is Genesis, uh, mm-hmm. Genesis first mm-hmm. few chapters. Mm-hmm. I emphasize a lot on that. We talk about God, still not Jesus. Mm-hmm. You, you and me believe and sure. talk about the perfect environment, a perfect life. Man in the presence of God, we had a perfect life. And I make that perfect life so beautiful. If he had lost a loved one, I said there was, there was no death there. If they have cancer, there was no sickness. Anything mm-hmm. that relates to their life, said that was not how, what God intended for us. And then I talk about man's fall into sin. Again, you're in Genesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about sin. Are you, and talk about their sin, my sin, and what's, what sin is. Still no, no argument about Jesus. Mm-hmm. God's love, perfect. So second is mm-hmm. man separated from God. I call that miserable life in my mind. <laughs> I, I make things the worst. You it's, it's, it's talk about sickness and uh, separation and divorce, everything bad in the world that they are experiencing. I connect that mm-hmm. to man's sin. It wasn't God's will. Because one misunderstanding Muslims have, it, they think God is in control of everything on earth, every good and evil he's authoring. So Number three, so man in the presence of God, man separated from God. Number three, I talk about God seeking after man. God loved you that he came after Mm. you. And I call that new life. Do you want to have a new life? And during talking about God seeking after man, I talk about Jesus as it was presented, as it's presented in the Old Testament and fulfilled in the New Testament. That's when Jesus becomes not just a prophet, but God in flesh who came right. to save us, to restore us to what we <clears throat> lost in the Garden of Eden. And number four step I, I share is man in the presence of God. Exactly the same as number one, man in the presence of God. And I tell them, God came, Jesus came to restore us to <clears throat> where God intended That's us. That's right. And it's going to be a life with God, no sickness, no death, no tears, and we're going to be with God forever. Do you desire that? I mean, mm. that, that presentation, they understand. Again, there is a video, God is Love, and I presented that. It's a 55 minutes, and I, I guess over 100,000 Muslims have come to Christ through just, through just that video. But don't think it's too complicated, presenting no. a gospel to, to Muslims. Now, let's talk about do's and don'ts. What's, uh, when we share the gospel with Muslims, what are the things we need to watch out for? Well, I, I think we don't want to talk about the prophet, first of all. We don't want to be offensive. Um, you know, Hormos, did you hear about in Washington, D.C., Muslims were gathering on the Capitol steps, and that was, I think it was in November. You know, amazingly, there was one group on the side of the street that had signs up. They were protesting. The Quran is filled with lies, all of these things, protests and that. On the other side of the street were some believers that were reaching out to those Muslims that were gathered there, giving them sandwiches, giving them bottles of water, getting them cups of coffee, helping them with their children. And you know, as I look at that, I think, I want to be on that side of the street. Yes. Uh, I really do. And, and, and you know, there's so many great tools out now. You can give them a video, the Damascus film, which is on Paul's life, or the Jesus video, we have a little uh, device, the Evangel Cube. It's just a, it's kind of like a Rubik's Cube, but it's after you're done sharing the gospel, it's really simple to just go through and say, you know, God is holy and righteous. Man was created in his image, but he sinned and he was separated from God. He sent Jesus as his son to redeem us. He was perfect. He never sinned. He raised people from the dead. But at the end of his life, they killed him, put him on a cross. He was buried in a Roman tomb. The greatest army of the day guarded the tomb. But it didn't matter because three days later, he rose from the dead, proving that he's victorious over sin and death. And so Jesus was right when he said, there's only one way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one gets to the Father but through Jesus, but through Him. And He's reaching down and wants to give you that free gift of eternal life today. The Bible also says if you reject that over your lifetime, nobody wants to talk about this anymore, but there is a real place, and it's called hell, and that's where the final separation is from God if you uh, reject Jesus. Do you know Hormos in one country, and it's a very difficult, restricted country, we've been with Muslims, four different families as we were sharing this, after a long time of sharing the gospel, when we got to Jesus on the cross, the mother of the family went, I saw that picture in my dream last night. Oh. And we said, a, a picture of Jesus on the cross. No, I saw that picture in my dream last night. And I wanted to know, what does this mean? And here you are. And of course, all four families came to the Lord, everybody in the house. So there's, there's lots of tools. There's lots of things. We should never feel that we're inept. That's right. We can use anything. Yes. You know, a simple gospel presentation backed up by our love, our mm -hmm. Uh, lifestyle is right. very powerful and uh, watching out for these uh, uh, do's and don'ts like you talked about argument I, I see many Christians make that mistake they compare Christianity and Islam yeah. and some some of them think oh I don't know about Islam I have to go study so I can defend it no you don't you know a few things about it but you don't use that you don't because there's so if you want to attack Islam and Quran you, you find so many things yeah. it's easy but it's not productive. Yeah. So don't attack Muhammad, don't attack Quran, don't argue. Um, some people start arguing because they're being convicted and they just want a rabbit trail. Yeah. I always come back to their heart and tell them, do you, are you, do you know God loves you? Do you know you're a sinful man? You know, people who follow religion sincerely, they know they're sinful because they know they have not followed. Even that Islamic law, perfectly. That's right. So you, you can share the gospel in a simple way and then uh, ask them to believe in Jesus. This is how I uh, make that invitation. Once I see they're ready, they have understood, they are willing, and uh, I, I don't say, okay, now you become a Christian. Yeah. This is, I say, are you ready to be born again? Are you ready yes. to receive God's love and, self and forgiveness? Um, do you are you ready to change your mind about Jesus? You know, changing your mind is repentance. But right. I don't use that. Are you ready to change your mind yeah. about Jesus? And they said, yeah. And, um, and I make sure, clearly, I'm not inviting you to change your religion. You're not getting a religion. You're getting salvation. Absolutely. You're getting God's love. You're getting a new life. So uh, let, let's pray. And uh, let me give you a, a sample of prayer. I, I pray with Muslims to come to Christ. I pray something like this. I say, um, of course, they, I, I, I tell them, if you, what I say, if it's in your heart, repeat. If it, you don't believe it, don't, don't, don't repeat it. Don't, don't repeat it, you know. And uh, so they repeat after me. And I tell them, one of the few things, I, first things I say, God, I believe you love me. I, that's how I usually start. Mm. God, I believe you love me. I receive your love. I believe you loved me so much that you came after me. Yeah. I don't deserve you. I'm a sinful man, a woman. But I believe you expressed your love on the cross for me. You died for my sins. Jesus, I believe you're not just a prophet. You're my savior. You're my owner. And today, at this point, I receive you into my heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. From this moment on, I'm your child and you're my father. Amen. And you know, this uh, last sentence, some get to get there, they get there and they stumble at their, yeah. their spiritual warfare. And one day say, God, I receive you as my father. Suddenly, just there is a freedom. Yeah. There is a breakthrough. And yes. they start crying. This is the first time they experience God as a father who loves them. In Islam, there is Amen. no such thing. So a simple prayer, a simple presentation, a simple prayer um, is enough. You know, it's, it's not too, too complicated. Let's talk about follow-up. Well, how, when a Muslim comes to Christ, how, how do you <clears throat> follow up? Boy, I tell you, that is so important. We know this from studies around the Middle East, that if a Muslim is not on their way to being discipled in nine months, they'll go back to Islam. It's really all that they know. It's their family, it's their culture, it's they're hearing the call to prayer five times a day. So, so critical to immediately get them into the Word, 
learn how to pray, how to worship. We have a little Bible study follow-up called The Incredible Journey. It's in Arabic, it's in Farsi, and we try to get them into God's Word because we found this. We were so naive when we started to disciple Muslims. We'd say, that's great, you're a believer now. Let's read the Gospel of John. And they would say, who's John? You know, it just was so, you know, 40 authors, 66 books, 1,500 years it was written over, just way over their heads, way over our heads. And so we want to get them into the scriptures, want to explain the scriptures, and that's so important. We don't want a generation, as one Middle East leader said, of Chrislam. Yes, they, they, they want to follow Jesus. They don't know how. They're really not a disciple. So follow-up is really critical. That's right, yeah. Um, about follow-up, one thing I've come to um, understand over the years, you know, used to, the Western style is a lot of teaching. You say, okay, mm -hmm. they come to Christ, you have to teach, teach, teach class. And, uh, but we found a simple, powerful way uh, to disciple because there are thousands are coming to Christ in yes. Iran and there's no church. So what do you do with them? Yeah. And you have to disciple them. Simple principle, teach them how to read, understand, and obey the Bible. So yeah. if you lead somebody to Christ the first few weeks, just sit with them, teach them, this is how you read the Bible. What do you understand? Yeah. I understand this. Okay, let's, let's go do it. Yeah. Teach them obedience. If you teach them how to read the Bible and obey the Bible, you're home free. That's I mean, right. if there's no church, they're still going to continue uh, to follow Christ. And of course, if there is church, you have to connect them to a fellowship, to other Christians. But Bible plus obedience. That's right is the most powerful thing. When they learn, all I need to do is read what I understand, go do. That's right. And even the Western society, we, we don't disciple that way. We don't, we are very teaching based rather right. than yeah. obedience based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do an information dump. You know, right. it's just yeah. like so much that's thrown on them. And, and really it's just simple. Get them in the word, teach them how to obey. That's right. Beautiful. And you know what happens when they, uh, you teach them, they go do miracles. That's right. They read Acts, it says, okay, it says here, I'm going to go do, and they pray for people, and they, uh, you know, miracles become so normal That's to right. them. And they come, when people call our programs and they talk about miracles, and, and tell me, I said, really? That happened? You raised the dead? Oh, the, the cancer was, he said, why are, why are you so excited? Of course. Je right. Jesus does that, you know. That's right. <laughs> it's he normal. Said he'd do it's that. in the Bible, and we do yeah. it, and, and we get the result. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Uh, now, answering questions and objections. Uh, there's some times they come with questions and objections that it stops a Christian. Yeah. And you just, you don't, get, you don't go any further. What are they and how do you answer that? Well, well some of them, I, I, is Jesus God? And we say unconditionally, yes, he claimed to be God. He said he was God. Now, that sometimes can be a huge barrier, but we just have to hit that head on. Is Jesus God? Yes. He claimed that he is God. He is God. We want them to know that truth. Um, Jesus is only a man. He's an outdated prophet. We've heard that before. But then again, we go to some of these stories about his transforming power and the life changes and, and the believers that say, I'm willing to die for, for my faith. I'm ready to tell you. And, and if, if you want to kill me, because I'm a believer, so be it. Uh, that's, a that's a pretty changed life. Yes. But Jesus, is Jesus God is a very critical question. Yeah. You have to be very careful how you answer it. Uh, because in their mind, when they ask you, is Jesus God? In their mind is, are you raising a man to be God? That's right. A prophet. And if you just simply just say yes, you've lost them. Mm -hmm. Yes, without any explanation, you've lost them. They, right. they won't hear anything else. Yeah that you talk about. So, when, you know, people call our programs on the air. They say, Pastor Ramos, is Jesus God? Yes or no? Don't say anything else. And they put me in pressure because if I say yes, you lose a lot of mm -hmm. viewers. Not that we shouldn't tell the truth, but we should tell the truth in a way that they understand. Right. So usually uh, this is how I answered, is Jesus God? I can decide it for you. Let me give you the evidence and you, there you go. decide. And you know, they're so tired of mullahs telling them. Mm -hmm. So I used that. I said, I'm not a mullah to telling you what yeah. to believe, but let me give you the evidence. And you decide who Jesus is. It, there is a verse in the Quran that, and, uh, that says, God is one. He's not begotten. He does not beget. Mm -hmm. And that verse is inscribed in their mind. 
and it always comes. It's one of the first few verses, and it's a verse that they recite five times a day, so it's there. So uh, blasphemy is equaling yes. a man to be God. So be, be careful. When, if people ask you, is Jesus God? Uh, say, you, are you serious about this? You want me to answer? So, okay, let me explain, and then you decide. And then you yes. go all the evidence in the Bible of who, that God says he will come uh, after us, that he will put on flesh, the, the, the word became, became flesh, and all that, and then ask him, now what do you think mm -hmm. with all these evidence? Uh, another question I um, encounter often is, this is not fair. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. Okay, God loves me. Mm -hmm. But it's not fair. I sin. I have to pay for my sin. Why would Jesus, why would God crucify Jesus for, for my sake? It, it, this is not fair. I don't understand. Coming from a uh, religious background or religious mindset, of course they don't understand. How would, how would you answer that? Well, I would say, you know, it, it wasn't fair because God put all of the sins, my sins, your sins, on Jesus. But he did that because of his extreme love. So, yes, there's a certain injustice in that, but yet he did that because of his great love for you and for me. And so we know that that's why he did it. Yes, I, I answer similar. It's not fair? Yes, of course it's not fair. Love is not fair. That's right. You know, I, I tell him about my daughter. I said, I told him, uh, I give my car to my daughter. I said, you only drive in the city. Don't, don't go out of the city. And a few weeks later, she called me from another city. She had an accident. And she had disobeyed me. And she had wrecked the car. <laughs> what did I do? You know, I, I go after her. Uh, I make sure she's okay. And eventually, I had to pay for that car. That's Why? Right. <laughs> Why? Because I love her. Even though she disobeyed, even though she had to repent, she said, I'm sorry. Right. But eventually, I paid. And so I, I tell Muslims, if we as parents, fathers and mothers, uh, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. The love, you know, our kids do things wrong and we have to suffer. We have to pay for it. That's love right. is not fair. Yes, it's not fair, but that's what love is. Love pays a price for the loved one. And if you say you love somebody, you are ready to pay Amen. a price for them. And if God Great. says that he loves us, it's natural that he would come and die on the cross and pay a price for us. And it's not fair. You're right. But so how much God loves you that he went, even though it was not fair, he did it for you. So it, you, you make his work greater, but, but, but not being fair. Absolutely. Great yeah. answer. Here's one that we hear all the yeah. time. The Bible is corrupted. The Bible is filled with mistakes. Yes. And, and, and the way I've answered that, I had a Muslim ask me point blank once in the Middle East, well, the Bible has mistakes. And I said, it does. Really? And he said, yes, it has mistakes. Plenty of them. And I said, you know what? Here's a Bible and it's really thick. You must have spent years reading this book to come to this conclusion. Uh, where are the mistakes? And of course, he couldn't find any. And I said, let me ask you this. Have you read the Bible? No. Well, I haven't read the Bible. And I said, is there any other book that you've never read that you don't believe in? And, and of course, he was stuck. Uh, <laughs> no. And, and so I've, I've, have you heard any? I, I, I often am asked that. What about the mistakes in the Bible? And I say, where are they? I've never heard any yet, but, but they often throw that out. Yes, I want to say on that question is... Uh, you, you know where it is, but I, I tell them, you know, people who don't who want to stop you from coming to God's love, they're, they're telling you these lies. Be careful, mm. you know. And uh, I tell them, uh, so tell me, when God, when the Bible talks about God is love, is that a mistake? Mm. When God says, love your enemies, love, forgive each other, you think that's a mistake? Yeah. You know, he says, I, I will give you peace and joy. And he, it's, and he delivers it. it you, can, you can experience it right now. Is that a, if it's a mistake, you won't, you won't experience That's it. Right. If you believe in Jesus and it's a lie, it's a mistake, you won't, nothing will happen to you. That's but right. if it's the truth, <clears throat> today, right now, if you believe, your life will be changed. And because it's the truth. So I challenge them directly, again, back, going back to their own life, their own heart, rather than, oh, let's talk about theory. Is That's Bible right. is changed or not? That's right. Go, back, go for their hearts. Go back to for their hearts. Don't argue with their, with their mind. Amen. Now, Muhammad is the last and best prophet. That, that's, the, that's what they're taught. That's what they taught me. And when I was reading the Bible, uh, Quran, I, this is the best. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to even read the Bible. I said, I don't need to. This is most complete, the last prophet, mm -hmm. the most complete book. Why do I need to read the Bible? 
So, Muhammad is the last and best prophet. How would you answer that? And, and would you say that Islam is the best religion? It's the best religion, they'll say. And I'll say, you know, I'm, I get frustrated by all religions, whether it's Judaism or nominal Christianity or Islam, because all of that does is lead you toward God, but you never get there. And you just get frustrated and, and you never can get to God. You cannot connect with him. So I throw out all of the religions and let's say, let's have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what's important. Not, not the religion, but really that relationship with Jesus. We don't want any more religion. We have right. enough of that exactly. in the Middle East. We want Jesus exactly. and that we want that relationship with that's God. Right. That's what I say on television. I, when I uh, invite people to Christ, I said, if you're looking for religion, there are many out there, and yeah. there are new ones being invented. Just go look for one. That's but right. it's not going to do anything for you. Religion right. is not going to do anything. That's right. But if you want salvation, and I tell them, if you're in marriage problem, if you're sick, if somebody is sinking, if somebody is uh, die, you know, drowning, do they need a book? Do yeah. they need a message, a messenger, coming and give them a message? Or they need somebody to save them? And there are many prophets, there are many religions in the world, but there is only one savior. Amen. Do you want a message today or do you want a savior? That's right. And I challenge them. I, I don't put down Muhammad or anything. I don't mm -hmm. even say it's true or not. What I'm saying is that thing is not going to help you any, anyway. It's just a religion. And, uh, but Jesus is alive. Jesus is truth. And again, challenge them. Tonight, you can experience it. I'm not just talking. Maybe after you die, tonight, today, right. you can know that this is true by your action, by your decision Amen. that this is true. So uh, when we answer questions and objections, we have to learn um, the main thing uh, is Jesus is God. You have to be very careful how you answer that and uh, talk about his uh, justice, talk about uh, why uh, Jesus is better. No, you don't do that talk about religion, no, you don't do that. You talk about relationship, you go to uh, that Jesus is not a religion. Make that very clear, so clear, that you are not calling them to change their religion. You're not calling them to you know, reject Muhammad and, believe and come to Jesus. You are telling them to be saved. And that religion you have does not save that's you, right. but Jesus saves you. That, that's, that's the best approach. With all these arguments, sometimes we get into arguments, we never get anywhere. That's right. But these things will bring the result. Now, let's, let's wrap this up. Um, how do you challenge? We talked about we inspire them. I hope we did. That the Muslims are reachable and have a passion, have a heart for them. Uh, we inform them how to share the gospel, do's and don'ts, and what attracts them, what, what not. And uh, now let's challenge. Yes. How would you challenge uh, people to reach out and share the gospel with uh, Muslims, both in the U.S. and around the world? Well, I think the most important thing is we need to put away our fears. Yeah. And we need to just lay them to rest and replace that with love. And, you know, about 15 years ago, I, yes. I was going into Denver, Colorado to pick up our car. It was being worked on at a garage. And they call, we, we live way down in the Springs area. And so go all the way up there. The car's not ready. And they told me it was going to be ready, and I'm kind of frustrated, and they said, you know what, we're sorry, we need another hour. Why don't you go across the street to a restaurant? There's a real nice Arab restaurant over there. Go over and get a falafel and a Coke or something, and, and just enjoy yourself. And so, okay, I go over across the street. So I'm sitting there, Hormos, and I'm, I'm really ashamed to say this. I'm sitting there, and, and I am having a falafel and a Diet Pepsi, easy ice, and all of a sudden these two men come in and they sit at a table and they have closely cropped beards and they have black leather coats on and they're speaking Arabic. And as I'm sitting there at the table, I'm judging them. I'm saying, these guys are probably terrorists. These, these guys are probably with Hamas. I bet that guy on the left has a bomb under his coat. <laughs> and I'm just making this thing bigger and bigger and bigger, and I'm getting myself in this tizzy, and then all of a sudden, since we're so close, I can hear them talk, and one of them says something about the Lord. And I listened in more, and then he said, yeah, Jesus is just, he's just awesome. And I thought, oh my gosh, not only are they not terrorists, they're brothers in Christ. I mean, boy, do I feel this high. And, and so then I go over and I, I, I said, Did you, were you talking about Jesus? They said, yes. 
We're believers. We're from Syria. We love Jesus and we're believers. We came out of Islam, but we serve him now. Amen. And then it went on farther and farther. And one of them invites me to their house and we have dinner. And man, I just felt like I could walk under the door when it was closed <laughs> on the way out. I, felt, I had just totally judged them. And it was all this fear that was in my mind, very much news driven. They're all terrorists. We got to put that fear away. Amen. We'll never reach anyone. Amen. I want to encourage people to go cross boundaries. When you see a Muslim, a, a woman with a whale, that's a wall. Don't, don't let that whale to be a wall because they intended <clears throat> that to be a wall. Cross the boundaries. Jesus, God loved us so much that he crossed the greatest boundary of heaven and earth. Our sin separated us. And he crossed that boundary to reach out to us. So our love should cause us to cross that boundary. Don't be afraid of how they look. Don't be afraid that they, they may not understand you. You go with God's love. Go with God's power. And, and share the gospel simply. And believe that it's going to change That's their right. lives. This Muslim might be next door. Maybe working next to you. Maybe it's... This crossing the boundary, maybe going to the next cubicle or the next right. house on the street or, the, yeah. or another country. Go and share. Support those who, who do. You know, there are many um, Christian organizations very effective in Muslim evangelism. Not only share the gospel <laughs> yourself, but pray for them and, and support them because there are many Muslims ready to receive Christ. I want to uh, pray and I want you to pray also. Would you pray for people who just yes. listened to us, watched us, that they will get that faith, courage, and love yes. to step out by faith to share the gospel with others. Would you pray for them? And Amen. I want to pray for them also. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you, you are moving so mightily in our midst today. And Lord, we believe outside of the first century, this is the greatest generation to be alive in. So many spiritual truths are on the line and, and yet people are open and we know that the people of Islam are open. Father, we thank you for just throwing open that door so that they might hear the truth and they might receive Jesus. So Father, uh, put away our fears. Help us to just turn off the news, get in the word, get in our knees, pray, and we ask, Lord, that you would, for everyone here and everyone that hears this video, that you would bring Muslims into our lives, that we might be able to love them, build a relationship, show them respect, show them who Jesus is. And Father, I pray that we'd be careful uh, because they're watching. Let the fruit of the Spirit come out of our heart, out of our life. Let it be all over our face, spilling all over us, so they could see a difference between Jesus and religion. Amen. And so we ask for Muslims that their harvest would grow and grow and grow. And this year, 23,000. Lord, we, we pray that a quarter of a million come to, them, to Jesus next year. Amen. Father, use us. We know that they're waiting. We know that you've sent us, and we want to be faithful. We want to be obedient. Amen. We commit to do this, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, I pray that you touch our hearts. Let it be filled with your passion and compassion and your love for the lost, especially for the, for the millions and billions of, of Muslims. Lord. Uh, set us free from our own fears. S send us out by, with <clears throat> power with the courage and with love to reach out to these Muslims. And I thank you, Lord, that your gospel is powerful. Nothing can stop your gospel. Give us the courage to go and share because we know you will confirm your message with signs and wonders and miracles. That's right. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Joel Rosenberg. On your left, you'll find some videos we've chosen specifically for you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.